What's up everyone, hope you're doing well. My name is Kasim and today I've got the six month review of the iPhone 12 mini. Now the mini has been slacking in terms of sales and that's not just compared to the iPhone 12 models, that's overall. In all iPhones, it only makes up for 5% of the sales. See, here's what I think is going on. I think there's a misunderstanding between the people and what the phone can actually do. See, when we go to the grocery market, and we want a bagel, if we go for the mini bagels, we're still getting a bagel, but we're not getting as many carbs. So we don't have to feel guilty about our choice. When we're going for those fun size chocolate bars, same thing goes here. You're getting lesser calories, lesser sugar, lesser chocolate, but you're not going to feel guilty about it. You'll still feel like you had a candy bar and you'll feel good. So generally our minds tend to think of mini as a compromise and I think that's what's happening but what nobody understands is that the iPhone 12 mini is a fun size candy bar that packs all the calories all the sugar and all the flavor so first and foremost I want to start with battery life because I know that's something that's on your guys's mind see what I personally noticed is with iOS 14.3 after that update the battery life on the mini really improved a lot so I just did a 12 Pro review. And in that I said, you know, four to six hours of screen time is more than good for me. And that is the same case here. With the mini, I've been able to do the same and I can get through the day. The only time though that I can't make it through the day is when I'm using the camera a lot more, when I'm playing games, or when you're consuming a lot of video content. The mini, because of its size, because of the smaller battery, it's just not going to be able to squeeze out the day for you. And the other thing I've noticed in my behavior with the mini versus the pro is that with the mini, I'm more conscious. I'm more conscious and aware of the battery life. Like I'll constantly throughout the day be looking in the top right corner at that battery and making sure that, hey, you know, how's it going? Am I gonna be able to make it through this day? I mean, I'm at home most of the time, it doesn't matter, but still just from an observer standpoint, so I can relay all this information to you guys. So that is something to keep in mind. The battery is not going to be the best. But then again, with a smaller phone and the smaller display, you're not gonna be using this phone as much. Like, I think everybody can know the capabilities of their phone, the limits, right? So you know what you have when you have the 12 mini. I don't think you're really a content consumer. I don't think you're somebody that's going to be really pushing the phone like crazy or using it like crazy. So you should be able to make it through the day. But if not, the MagSafe charger, drop it on there 30 minutes and this thing charges up pretty quickly and is ready to go have fun again. Next, I want to talk about the camera system. Now this has a dual 12 megapixel camera. So you've got the wide lens and the ultra wide as opposed to the triple camera system that you find on the Pro and Pro Max. Now I will say that I do miss the telephoto lens because instead of being able to just optically zoom in with the telephoto and get closer to things, I have to physically move closer to subjects. Now the other thing I miss between the Pro and this is that this stabilization in the mini, it's just not as good. So what I have to do when I'm shooting with this one is I have to shoot in 4K 60 and then I use Final Cut to slow it down and add stabilization. I don't have to add stabilization as much in my 12 Pro. So for example, that 12 Pro review I just did, the six month review, in that review, all those shots, that intro, was all shot with this camera. Now, another issue is low light. So when you're shooting video in low light, you're gonna get that grain. So that grain that you get is noise. You have to get the lighting perfectly. And that's just been my experience. Like that intro took me a lot of time to shoot with the mini simply because I had to get the lighting just right for everything to turn out as polished as I wanted it. 
Now, aside from these few minor differences, other than that, guys, don't let yourself be fooled into thinking that this camera system is not great. Your photos, your videos are still going to be great. Seriously, if you practice, like I said in the 12 Pro, if you practice shooting with this 12 mini camera, or if you've got the 12, which has the exact same camera system, you can achieve a lot. Seriously, you can do a lot with the camera system, and I've been highly impressed. Now, one limitation you do have with the Mini and the 12 is that in Dolby Vision, you're not gonna be able to shoot in up to 60 frames per second. You're limited to 30 frames per second, but for everyday things, things that we're gonna be doing, guys, like shooting our pets, our kids, family, making videos on vacation, all of that stuff, you're going to be able to achieve great quality with this camera. Like, I really don't doubt it because when I'm not able to shoot with the Pro because the Pro has to be in one of my videos, I've been able to achieve amazing things with just the Mini alone. Honestly, for everyday things, this camera is awesome, but when I look at me having the Pro and the Mini, I have to go with the Pro when it comes to the camera just because of the versatility it offers me when creating content for here on YouTube. But if I was just doing day to day, I'd be more than happy with the Mini or the 12. Next, I'm gonna talk about the display. Now, this is a 5.4 inch Super Retina XDR display. So just like all the other iPhone 12 models, this has an HDR display. Now you are making a few compromises. For starters, when you're not watching HDR content, the max brightness is going to be 625 nits. That in comparison to my 12 Pro, the 12 Pro has 800 nits. So you are sacrificing a bit there. But in terms of HDR content, 1200 nits max, just like the rest of the 12 models. Now, one thing I did notice is that I came from the iPhone SE 2020 before this. That had an LCD display and when I was outdoors, I felt at times that it just wasn't bright enough. With this one, even though you are compromising brightness a little bit, it's been perfectly fine even outdoors, indoors. Photos, videos, any content you consume on here, guys, the colors are accurate, they're very nice, and this is equally a beautiful display. Now, one thing I did notice between the Pro and the Mini is that I was switching between the two. So I'd have the Pro for 10 days, then I've had the Mini for 10 days. So what I'd noticed right away is that you notice that size decrease right away, but with time, you get used to it. And this brings me to the actual size. I can't tell you guys how much I love the size of the 12 Mini. This phone not only fits in your pockets, but it disappears in your pockets. Like there's been times I'm out and about and I literally like have to feel my pockets because I've, I feel like I don't even have my phone on me, especially if I've been carrying the 12 Pro for a few days. The size of the 12 mini takes me back to the 5S and the SE. Those sizes were just so awesome and it's so refreshing to go from these larger phones back to a smaller and more compact one. And this brings me to the design because when you take the size of this 12 mini, then you take the squared off edges it's such an awesome combination, like it's perfect. You can literally palm it and reach every corner of the screen with one finger. So in terms of usability, in terms of design, the size, this phone is literally perfect. I said it in my 12 Pro review and I'll say it again here that this squared off design, especially with the mini and all the models, honestly, it's really great, and I really hope that Apple keeps it around for a long time. Next, I wanna talk about durability. Now, one thing I do love when comparing it to my 12 Pro is the matte aluminum edges on the sides. They've held up perfectly fine. Um, I think there were reports for this phone too that the paint on those were chipping, so I haven't had any issues with the paint chipping, and overall, the phone just has a few scratches on the backside. Now, when I was looking for scratches, I have no clue how those scratches got there because this phone compared to my Pro has lived inside of a case longer. 
the reason I've had this in a case is because if you guys remember my video that I just did about the leather case, I wanted that to patina. So I threw that on the mini and I was trying to use it as much as possible. So honestly, when I looked at the back glass and I noticed those few scratches, I don't know how they got there because I've been cleaning out the case. But other than that, taking a look around the phone, it's held up pretty well. Next, let's talk about performance. Now, honestly, guys, this A14 chip is amazing. Like, I've not once had any trouble here, just like I said in my 12 Pro. This has the same chip, so the brains of the operation in the 12 Mini are the same as the Pro, as the Pro Max, and the 12. So, apps, anything that you're gonna do on here, you're not gonna have any issues when it comes to performance. I haven't had this thing slow down on me even once. And I've even done videos to where I'm actually editing small YouTube videos on my phone. So honestly, the A14 is amazing. Even my A13 chip in the iPhone SE 2020, that was amazing. Like I didn't have any performance issues there. So I honestly wasn't expecting any kind of performance issues going into this newer chip. And I've not had any so far. Last but not least, guys, I wanna talk about whether you should upgrade now or you should consider waiting until the, all the new iPhone models. Now, I think it's best to wait. Reason being because, you know how I talked about the sales slacking? I don't know if there's going to be another mini. So if there's not another mini, well, the benefit that you'll have is that if you're looking at this phone, you're gonna be able to get it for a really good deal. Whether you're buying it from a carrier or you buy it used off of somebody, you're gonna get it for a good price because now it's gonna be a year old. So the price is automatically gonna drop. On the flip side, if Apple does make a mini two or a 13 mini, whatever they're gonna call it, well, there'll be a bunch of upgrades. So I think it's worth looking at what they're offering in the new phone and compare that and see whether or not you should go with the new one or the older one. Now, I personally am looking forward to another iteration of the Mini. I wanna see where they can go, how they can improve this, because technology is evolving day by day, and it'd be so nice to have even better stabilization with the Mini, because then you're really not lacking much, right? You've got a bunch of iPhones, but for each person. If you're that person that loves a compact phone, you want something to not really take up a lot of space in your pockets or your purse, and you still want to have a very capable phone, then the 12 mini is the right answer for you, or the 13 mini, or whatever they're going to do with the future. I honestly can't say anything as of yet. So with that said, guys, I hope my insight, my review has helped guide you whether or not you should consider upgrading now, or whether or not you should wait to see what they do with a future mini. Thank you so much for your time, for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, comment down below with anything that you'd like to say, and most importantly, guys, take care of yourselves, and I will see you all in the next video.